questions. Yeah, please. Um, during the pandemic, uh, the QAnon movement has been, appears to be gaining a lot of followers. Can you talk about what you think about that and what you have to say to people who are following this movement right now? Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much, uh, which I appreciate. But I don't know much about the movement. Uh, I have heard that it is gaining in popularity. And from what I hear, it's, these are people that when they watch the streets of Portland, when they watch what happened in New York City in just the last six or seven months, but this was starting even four years ago when I came here, almost four years, can you believe it? Uh, these are people that don't like seeing what's going on in places like Portland and places like Chicago and New York and other cities and states. And uh, I've heard these are people that love our country and they just don't like seeing it. So I don't know really anything about it other than they do supposedly like me. And they also would like to see problems in these areas, like especially the areas that we're talking about, go away. Because there's no reason the Democrats can't run a city. And if they can't, we will send in all of the federal, whether it's troops or law enforcement, whatever they'd like. We'll send them in. We'll straighten out their problem in 24 hours or less. Okay? Well, at, at the crux of the theory is this belief that you are secretly saving the world from this satanic cult of pedophiles and cannibals. Does that sound like something you are behind? Or well, I haven't, I haven't heard that, but... Uh, is that supposed to be a bad thing or a good thing? I mean, you know, if, uh, if I can help save the world from problems, I'm willing to do it. I'm willing to put myself out there. And we are, actually. We're saving the world from a radical left philosophy that will destroy this country. And when this country is gone, the rest of the world would follow. The rest of the world would follow. That's the importance of this country. And when you look at some of the things that these people are saying with uh, defund the police and no borders, open borders, everybody just pour right into our country. No testing, no nothing. You know, you talk about testing, no testing. Uh, Mexico, as you know, has a very high rate of infection. The wall is now going to be next week 300 miles long. Uh, our numbers are extraordinary on the border. Had that, and this is through luck, perhaps, more than talent, although the talent is getting it built when one party refuses to allow it. You don't hear talk about the wall anymore. But I will say this. Um, we need strength in our country, not weakness. Too much weakness. Yes, John. Mr. President, you have been very bullish on the promise of convalescent plasma yeah. to treat coronavirus. The FDA appeared to be on the brink of issuing an emergency use authorization for convalescent plasma, but after hearing from top officials at the NIH that there wasn't enough evidence to go ahead with that, the FDA has put that on pause. Your reaction to that, and do you believe that convalescent plasma should be in the arsenal of treatments for Well, I hear great things about it, John. That's all I can tell you, and uh, it could be a political decision because you have a lot of people over there that don't want to rush things because they want to they want to do it after November 3rd and you've heard that one before but I've heard fantastic things about convalescent plasma and uh, I've heard numbers way over 50 percent uh, success and people are dying and we should have it approved if it's good and I'm hearing it's good I heard from people at the FDA that it's good so we'll see. I'm going to check that right after this conference. My understanding that the White House will encourage the NIH and the FDA to get this out there as quickly as well, possible. Well, the numbers are as good as I'm hearing. I mean, I'm hearing over 50 percent, and that's very good. And we've approved certain things are at 31 percent, and that's okay, too. That's not bad, and it's really had a tremendous impact. Uh, but, uh, no, I, I have... Uh, um, you're telling me something right now that surprises me, but we'll check it out right Are after you this. Concerned about a delay? I don't want delays. I don't want people dying. I don't want people dying. Yeah, please, sir. Mr. President, I want to ask you about your tweet earlier today on Goodyear. It was essentially calling for a boycott on Goodyear tires. Do you want the federal government to stop 
buying and using Goodyear product as well? And is there well, anything? I'm not happy with Goodyear because what they're doing is playing politics. And the funny thing is, the people that work for Goodyear, I can guarantee you, I poll very well with all of those great workers in Goodyear. And uh, when they say that you can't have Blue Lives Matter, you can't show a blue line, you can't wear a MAGA hat, but you can have other things that are Marxist in nature. Uh, there's something wrong with the top of Goodyear. And what the uh, radical left does is they make it impossible for people to do business if they're Republican or if they're conservative. They put out all sorts of effort, uh, don't shop there. They do th vicious things, not so different than what you saw in the streets of Portland two nights ago. What kind of boycott do you intend? Well, I don't know. That's up to people, but I wouldn't recommend it. If they, if they want to hold political speech, if they want to let you not do what everybody's doing, if they want to wear a MAGA hat or if they want to wear a blue life, you know what blue lives matter, right? That's policemen and women. Uh, that's a terrible thing. That's a terrible thing. So they're using their power over these people. And these people want to wear whatever it is that we're talking about. You know that. And so I would be very much uh, in favor of people don't want to buy there. And you know what? They'll be able to get a good job because we set a jobs record over the last quarter, as you know. The most jobs ever in the history of our country. Uh, you'll be able to get another good jobs. I think it's disgraceful uh, that they did this. Please, go ahead. Uh, yes, Mr. President, you've said that the arrest of Jimmy Lai in Hong Kong is, quote, a terrible thing. Do you have a message for Jimmy Lai? Has your administration spoken directly with him? Is your State Department working for his release? Well, I send him best wishes. I hear he's a wonderful gentleman. Uh, he's certainly a brave man. Um, and I send him best wishes. With that being said, uh, because of that and obviously what happened in Hong Kong, we've taken all of the vast amounts of money that we used to subsidize Hong Kong. We essentially subsidized Hong Kong by giving them all sorts of incentives. And that's what made Hong Kong the exchange and business in Hong Kong successful. I've taken it all back. That means that the United States is going to do a lot more business. You know, we, at, we, we really gave them tremendous incentive and subsidy in order that they be successful for freedom. But now that the freedom obviously seems to have been taken away, we will keep all of the incentives that we were giving them, which is billions and billions of dollars, and all of that business will come into our country, including the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ, and uh, it'll all come here. But I feel badly for him, because I hear he's a good person. I don't know him, but I hear he's a good person, obviously, a very brave person. Did you have something to ask? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, with the Iraqi Prime Minister coming in tomorrow, uh, what about... Say it. The Iraqi Prime Minister is coming in tomorrow to meet with you, and how do you feel about this notion that Iraq can once again become the buffer between Iranian influence and Russian influence in the Middle East? Do you feel that under this Prime Minister uh, that that's possible once again? What are your thoughts well, on Well, this it? is a man that I get along with very well. We're largely out of Iraq. We're down to very few soldiers. I said we're getting out of these endless wars, these... Uh, ridiculous, endless wars. We should have never been there in the first place. I think it was the worst decision made in the history of our country. Should have never been there in the Middle East. We should have never been. Uh, but we're getting out rapidly out of, you know, over the course of three years. And getting out, it's very sticky getting out. And some people agree and many people don't agree. But I think uh, most people very much agree. Uh, we're doing very well in our negotiations with Afghanistan. We're getting out. We're down to a much smaller number of people left there. And, you know, I greet uh, men and women coming home and coming home after they've been hit. I've also greeted many, many at Dover, greeted many bodies coming back in. And uh, we've been there 19 years and we're basically policemen. We're acting as police as opposed to soldiers. And they're gonna have to police their own states. And they've been doing that for thousands of years. But it's time after 19 years that our soldiers come home. They've done an incredible job, but, you know, they don't, they're not allowed to fight to win. And, and maybe they shouldn't be, because a lot of the people, uh, it's not their fault. But with uh, the Taliban and with uh, 
going to Iraq again. We're, we're down in Afghanistan, uh, very low numbers, and that'll be uh, taking place. And I let them know, do anything, and you'll be hit like you've never hit, be hit, been hit before. Uh, so we're, uh, we're doing very well. Syria, the same thing. Remember when I took all of the soldiers off of the border between Syria and Turkey, right? And everybody said, oh, this is, that was two years ago. It was a long time ago. They said, oh, this is terrible, terrible, terrible. We're going to leave. Why don't we have our soldiers between Syria and Turkey? Turkey can definitely take care of itself. I have a very good relationship with President Erdogan, and Syria has been fighting forever. And I say, why are we guarding their border? And I brought our soldiers back home. I got them out. And guess what? Nothing's happened. They've been fighting like they have been for a thousand years. Okay? Nothing's happened. And nobody mentions that. Everybody said, this is going to be a disaster. There's no disaster. Nothing's happened. And so we're uh, getting out of the endless wars. And we are building a military the likes of which the world has never seen. Two and a half trillion dollars we've spent. And we hopefully don't ever have to use it. But we want to focus on a much bigger picture because we have a much bigger picture. It's uh, when you look at what China's doing, when you look at what Russia's doing, when you look at what some other countries are doing, uh, we want to be ready just in case there is a catastrophe. We don't want to see that. We don't want to ever use it. We've rebuilt our military, new missiles, new rockets and new tanks and new everything, new everything, two and a half trillion, you know, all made in the USA. And we've uh, upgraded incredibly our nuclear capability and uh, some of our nuclear needed nourishment, it needed new strength, and we've, we've upgraded it very, very significantly. I mean, to a level that nobody would even believe. And hopefully we don't. You pray to God we never have to use it, okay? But we've never been in a position where we've been this strong. Please. Mr. President, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to ask you about the Middle East. I have a couple questions. Um, you mentioned that other countries are interested in, in following suit. Uh, yes, after the having to do with UAE and Israel. Exactly. So right. is, do you expect that Saudi Arabia will join? And I do. Yes. And also, uh, the Emiratis have expressed interest in the F-35. Um, do you think that that should be something that they could look forward to in the future? Is there some no, sort I of think time limit? I think, look, they've, they've definitely got the money to pay for it. You know, it's nice because uh, usually when we, a lot of times we make deals, they don't have 10 cents, these countries we deal with. We give it to them like, how about paying us back later? But they never pay because they don't have the money. No, they have the money, and they, they would like to order quite a few F-35s. It's the greatest fighter jet in the world, as you know, by far. Stealth. Totally stealth. You can't see it. Makes it very difficult. I was asking a pilot, what do you think is better? This one, this one, that one? Talking about Russian planes, Chinese planes. He said, well, the advantage we have is you can't see it. So when we're fighting, they can't see us. I say, that sounds like a really big advantage to me. To these guys, you know, they look, by the way, I said, to these pilots that I meet, they look better than Tom Cruise, and they're definitely tougher. And he's a nice guy. But these, uh, these people are amazing, and I, I speak to them a lot about it. What do you think, you know, as I go around to the various places? I say the big one in Florida, as an example. That was a big one, knocked down pretty much by the hurricane. So uh, I spend a lot of time on that. And it's the greatest plane in the world. Uh, one thing about that kind of thing, technology, high technology, the uh, greatest plane doesn't last long. Somebody comes up with something else, but we're always the one to come up with something else. So, uh, yeah, they'd like to buy F-35s. We'll see what happens. It's under review, but uh, they made a great, uh, a great advance in peace in the Middle East. Even the New York Times thought it was an incredible deal. Can you imagine that? Uh, Tom Friedman had a very nice thing to say about it. I spoke to him about it. He thought it was terrific, and, and it is terrific. I see a lot of countries coming in fairly quickly, and when you have them all in, uh, ultimately Iran will come in too. There'll be peace in the Middle East. That'll be nice. Iran will be uh, very much neutralized. They never thought this could have happened. And with the horrendously stupid Iran deal signed by Obama, uh, this could have never happened. Really, there's so 
uh, on the Goodyear issue, you ride on Goodyear tires in the yes. presidential limousine. Correct. If there were an alternative, would you want those tires swapped out? Yeah, I would do that. I would, I would swap them out based on what I heard. We'll see what happens. Look, you're going to have a lot of people not wanting to buy that product anymore. And uh, they'll buy from a competitor. Made in the USA, too. Okay, please. Go. Mr. President, uh, excerpts from Obama's speech that he will, he'll give later at the Democratic Convention um, show that he will. He says that he hoped that you would take the, being president more seriously once you had the job and discover reverence for democracy. And then he said, I quote, but he never did. What is your reaction you to know, that? You uh, know, when I listen to that and then I see the horror that he's left us, the stupidity of the transactions that he made. Look what we're doing. We have our great border wall. We have security. We have uh, the UAE deal, which has been universally praised, praised by people that aren't exactly uh, fans of Donald Trump for various reasons. I don't know why. It can't be my personality, but they're not fans, right? And when I look at uh, what we have, and I look at how bad he was, how ineffective a president he was, he was so ineffective, so terrible. Slowest growing recovery in the history, I guess since 1929, on the economy. Don't forget, until the China virus came in, we had the greatest economy in the history of the world. And now we're doing it again. I'm gonna have to do it a second time. We're doing it again. Hard to believe. We're doing very well. You heard the numbers. They're way, way down on the, on the virus. But when you look at the kind of numbers that we're producing on the stock markets, we're almost at the level. In fact, NASDAQ and S&P are higher than they were at their highest point prior to the China virus coming in, the plague coming in. Now, President Obama did not do a good job. And the reason I'm here is because of President Obama and Joe Biden. Because if they did a good job, I wouldn't be here. And probably if they did a good job, I wouldn't have even run. I would have been very happy. I enjoyed my previous life very much. But they did such a bad job that I stand before you as president. Thank you all very much. Mr. President, Thank you. Mr. President, 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 M